What's going on everybody? Welcome to Rush TV. I'm Russell Lewis and I just wrapped up probably one of the best interviews I've done since I started Rush TV. I did it with my brother Tuan Win. He is a John Maxwell certified speaker, trainer, and coach. He's a business owner, an entrepreneur, a community activist, and so many positive things. However, in 2014, he was sentenced to 16 years in prison. He's a three-time convicted felon. To me, he embodies what it means to beat the eyes against all statistics. He had all these things stacked up against him, but he did not allow his past to define who he is and who he has become. So you want to stay tuned for this interview. I am a captain in the United States Air Force. I am an air battle manager, and I created a platform where civilian and military members can connect with the next generation of leaders. I understand the importance of mentorship because it changed my life. And I want to make sure that everybody gets that opportunity. So without further ado, welcome to Mentorship Moment. Welcome to another Mentorship Moment. I am joined with my brother, Tuan Nguyen. Man, what's going on, bro? Good to finally connect with you all on this interview slash podcast, man. I'm honored. Love what you got going on, man. But I'm more excited just with the connection because I love saying this is my pain is a passport. And I know we can go into that a little bit, but that that's just something juicy I want to throw out there because how is my pain a passport to enter or connect to someone else's broken border? So I'm just going to leave it as that, man. Nah, we leaving that. Talk about it. Talk about it just a little bit as far as what you mean. You know, just through owning my story, there's power in that. I've spent a lot of years trying to impress people with maybe success or my outward appearance or shiny objects, but truly we impact people through our failures. People wanna know your failures. People wanna know your pain points. Like that's what connects a lot of people to your story is them saying, man, he's not a perfect leader. He's an authentic leader. And I want some of that because I wanna operate in that type of space. You know, are you feeling me on that? I am a hundred percent. Let me yeah. tell you why though, because a lot of people are listening to this, they don't know why, right? At a very early age, I was in all kinds of trouble. At the age of 13, I was a juvenile delinquent, single parent household, college dropout. I talk about all these things, same mindset you have about failure. I had that. I just wanted to impress people, especially the people in my community. So I did a lot of things, a lot of negative knucklehead type things to impress these folks. Looking back, I wish I wasn't that guy, but I'm glad I, I went through all of that because it, it pretty much made me who I am. I want to talk about a post you made March 2014 on Facebook. Is that all right? Come on with it. All right, so I'm going to read this real quick. So on March 14th, 2014, I got busted with over 400 grams of methamphetamine, cocaine, and MDMA. I was facing a 35-year sentence because of my previous felonies with drug cases. I ended up signing for 16, and I did five on it, and my second parole, and I am still on parole after nine years. The biggest difference in my life now is understanding. If you don't know what God has placed inside of you, you won't know how to protect it. It's so awesome to find purpose through the pain. Those five years were the best years of my life because of my perspective on my failures. My experience in coaching prisoners on the inside has expanded my coaching on the outside. I would have never saw this 20 years ago. Speaking and coaching was nowhere on my radar. God has a purpose for everything you go through. A man's heart plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. God's not done writing your story. Wow. So where were you during that time mentally after you got busted? Because I can only imagine the fear, confusion, the anxiety, all of that stuff just hanging over you. Well, you know, from this post, there's no mention of me actually going to prison like two previous times before that. So here I am. This is my third felony conviction. And so I had multiple drug charges. And these weren't like little minor drug charges where, you know, I got caught with something small. I've always got busted with these large amounts of dope because I was trying to be that somebody. I was trying to find my place of value. I was seeking validation from all the things that I could consume on the outward. And just think about it. How many times did I say, I will never come back to this place? Said that once. I said that twice. Here I am. I got set up by this so-called friend of mine, right? Uh, I, I surrounded myself with a lot of pretty women, pretty scandalous women, to be more correct. But I mean, that's the type of people I surrounded myself with. And so it, it comes with that territory. When I got snitched out, I got set up. Here we, here we go down this path where I'm willing and dealing with people that I have 
the, I'm dealing with narcotic officers that are, are, are pretending to be like these high profile dope dealers. And I'm getting set up by these people that could care less about me. But uh, yeah, man, just when, you know, when I got busted and I had this, I was in the back of the cop car. I'll never forget it, bro. I, I had my fall partner in the car with me and he's literally just crying. He's just banging on the window. He's like little, I mean, he was acting like this. I'm like, bro, like I, I didn't even know that you could act like this. And that's what happens when you're put in a, in a crisis is what really is inside you will always come out. But you know how I was? I remained calm because I knew it was coming. I knew God's call upon my life at that time was greater than my sin. I knew despite whatever I was doing, you know, there was no, there was a place where I knew God would correct me and I had to quit running. And I felt compelled in that moment to say, okay, God, I know this is coming. I don't know how long I'm going to serve. Have mercy on me. Like there wasn't no excuses that I was making at that time because I've made every single excuse. Now it was the time where I said, okay, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to surrender. I know your calling upon my life is greater. Let's go ahead and just rock and roll. Like whatever it is, just have mercy on me, Lord. That's it. But yeah, that's kind of like where I was at when, when, this, when this all went down, Russell. A lot of people can easily look over that, uh, all of that confusion and pain and struggle and failure if they have never been in it. I got to tell you, I am so proud of you, man, for changing your life. Because so many of us, we allow our statistics to define who we are. But you have completely turned your life around, and now you're helping other people find their passion. So I want to switch gears just for a minute and talk about M21 Empowerment, your business, and what you do. Cool. M21 Empowerment Group was something that I started roughly about a year ago with a business partner of mine, best friend, April Holly. I just had this vision. Empowerment, impact, and transformation are trigger words in my life empowerment transformation and impact and if i were to ask your audience right now what's that one word that really describes who you are like what's that one word that people will remember you by and if you don't have a word that people recognize you or will remember you by then maybe you're not operating in your purpose and your passion come on I'm just speaking the truth because when most people think about my story and what I've overcome, they think of the word impact. They think about the word transformation. They think about empowerment. And when I have clarity on that right there, I actually become and I start doing that. But you can't speak on something that hasn't happened to you. It's not going to flow. It's not going to flow through you. That's why I'm, I'm confident in who I am today. That's why I can say, here, here, I'll give you this. This is a good one. I can honestly say, hey, I'm the number one transformational impact coach in the world. Why do I say that? Well, it's part of branding, but guess what? How many transformational impact coaches are there? If you looked it up, there's probably not anybody. But I can operate in that space because I've been transformed and I've transformed other lives and I'm a person of impact and I'm a coach. So imagine I put that on a banner right now and said, hey, I'm the number one transformational impact coach in the world right now. Mic drop. Versus saying, I, I'm a transformational impact coach. Uh... You see the difference between the confidence and the conviction when you actually say that where you're like, bro, this dude's the real deal. Like he's not, he's not persuading me by his words. I'm convicted by what he's saying because his energy is freaking contagious. But, but so with M21 Empowerment Group, that's my coaching business. You know, uh, I speak, coach and train. I'm also part of the John Maxwell team. And we'll talk more about that. But I just had this vision where when I was coaching inmates inside prison, I realized that there's so much power in coaching people. And that's when I really shifted my leadership where it wasn't about directing. It was about, hey, how do I connect? How do I become greater at asking good questions? Like I, I've tried everything else, but I'm like, man, I started seeing the power. And when you can actually see inside someone's potential and start drawing it out, like that's the power of it is knowing how to ask great questions and pulling the best out of people. But yeah, man, M21 Empowerment Group, uh, 21 Laws of Empowerment, home of the 21 Day Challenge. My birthday's on January 21st. There's a lot of things uh, on branding that, but yeah, man, we started that roughly about a year ago. I had no idea how to even start a business. The only business I've ever had were illegal businesses. So starting off straight out of prison, just with kind of like this vision, like literally I had to do everything afraid, bro. Like they didn't teach me, they didn't teach me how to become an entrepreneur inside prison, at least legally. 
So I got a lot of sales experience selling a different type of product, but now it's like, man, you're a speaker, you're a coach. Now you got to learn how to actually operate in selling now and finding the ideal client. I mean, there's so much I, I had to go through in that first year of, of just coaching and speaking, bro. So we are both John Maxwell certified speakers, trainers, and coaches. I will tell you, just being a part of that team, it kind of teaches you and forces you to find your passion while doing the same for others. So my question is, what is your passion? My passion is simply, hey, what kind of legacy am I going to leave behind me? How will people remember me? We started off kind of just talking about that a little bit in the beginning. Is it's What's that word that people are going to recognize you with? You know, and so I, how I will be remembered is going to be based on how I serve in this life. And so my, my passion is after going through 10 years of prison and realizing that there's so much hidden potential in many people, I want to be that one that's going to be a catalyst for leadership development. 10 years of prison, I've never been in t any type of personal growth or leadership development class. And, I, and the reason why I say that is society doesn't see prisoners as leaders, so they will never invest in us to become leaders. And when I saw the impact on leadership development in that culture, I said, ooh, this is my why right here. If it was anything, those five years showed me that this was the reason that you were born. You were created with purpose for a purpose, and you're going to be a catalyst for this leadership movement because transformational leaders believe things that others don't believe. They see things that others don't see, and they inspire others to believe in things and see things that they don't see and believe in. And that's what happened to me, was I've had people in my life tell me that this leadership stuff's not going to work inside prison. Yeah. What you got planned with trying to be a John Maxwell coach and all that? That sounds great. How many, how many times have you taken flight and never landed? And in those moments, here's what I want you to know. Your vision will always get tested for authenticity to see if that's really from God. And most people never fulfill their mission, their vision, because they stop at the first sign of opposition. And so my passion is to transform other lives so they can transform others. I believe in living a life of impact. There's so much more outside of you. As I'm developing myself, I want to develop others. I want to be that catalyst where at the end of the day where Tuan was known as a manufacturer. What do you mean by that? Yeah, he manufactured leaders by the masses through leadership and communication. Remember, this was a process. So the process I went through in really defining who it is that I am as a coach and a leader, and I'll say this, I was transformed through faith, but my level of impact came through leadership and communication. The reason why I'm so hard up about transformational leadership is because it's happened to me. And, and I'll tell you why. Leadership development and communication is so important is because without that, you can't transfer the potential that you have inside you to the next person. So I say this, I'm a transformational impact coach because I got transformed through faith, but my level of impact came through leadership and communication. 90% of leaders today never develop any other leaders. Why is that? You can't give something that you don't have. You can't transfer something that hasn't been developed. Think about how powerful that is. Most people that are in leadership position just have a title. This is just a position but they're not transformative. They can't reproduce anything else outside of what they are. And so we might, we might teach what we know, but truly what are we reproducing? And I wanna be a one that can reproduce other leaders to operate just like me and to become greater. And that's why I'm so fired up about leadership because uh, no one saw me as a leader inside prison. No one believed in me to become a transformational leader. God put me in that space because he wanted to show me this is why I made you. And there's a difference between your anointing and when you're appointed. And I saw that. I said, ooh, I had to go through 30-something years to get to that place where I started seeing the revelation of why God created me just for this moment. Miles Monroe said this one time. And I got to drop this right here. He was talking about Nelson Mandela. And he said, sometimes you got to go to prison with your vision so that you can come out with it. Then I'll leave it as that. I'm going to pass the mic back to you, bro. The thing I feel like a lot of people run into is they allow time to defeat them in a way. Because you look at everybody around you and you say, oh, man, she's doing amazing. Why am I not doing great? Or he's doing all of this stuff. Why am I not there yet? 
and I talk about being a college dropout. There were so many times that I looked at my classmates who were going to college, who were graduating from college and just doing all this great stuff. And I was just like, man, I'm never going to be on their level ever. So I started to allow time to define me and kind of beat me down a little bit. But as I look back on my life, I realized everything I went through was for a reason. So for people who are going through things right now, and I know you all are, I just want to let you all know that everything you're going through is for a greater purpose. You just got to keep grinding, stay motivated and keep at it. So before we end this thing up, brother, what I want to talk about is if you could give somebody any one piece of advice to empower, motivate and inspire them, what would it be? Man, that's a good question. That's a good thing. I'm ready because I, I, I've already had this inside me. So it's going to come out naturally. Right? And it's not a script. Number one is the power of proximity. The power of proximity matters. Who you pray with matters. Who you play with matters. Who you collaborate with matters because who's hot and who's not. I love that because in the beginning, I saw myself as this chicken that had the appearance of looking like I could fly. And I would step outside the chicken coop and I would look and I'd be like, man, one day I want to soar amongst eagles. But you know what I did? I just went back to the chicken coop. And I stayed the same because I wasn't willing to make any changes and challenge myself and stepping outside of the comfort zone. So because of that right there, that one principle in my life where I'm like, hey, you know what? I want to become greater. I must surround myself with others that are way ahead of me. And that was uncomfortable in the beginning, especially with my background, not having those credentials. But you know what it was? The law of attraction be made me become magnetic because of the conviction and the passion that I had in my life. Others that were ahead of me were willing to bring me along because they started believing in my passion, the conviction. That's one thing that's really propelled me. Second one is this, I wanna I want try to give three of them real quick. Take imperfect action and quit making excuses. Do it afraid, jump, build your wings on the way down. Like embracing failure was the biggest thing in my life. It was that mindset where I'm like, you know what, I'll never become great if I don't embrace failure as the process. So now I see failure and success as a combination. You have, you have to go through it. And just those two right there, along with the last one, which is, uh, so I mentioned fail fast, fail often, fail forward, but the power of proximity and embracing failure as my friend and not my foe literally has transformed my life right there. Before we wrap this thing up, I want to let everybody know that we're going to be doing a part two of this. So be on the lookout for that. But brother, please tell them where you are, where they can find you, how they can get in touch with your businesses and everything you got going on. Man, I've done so many podcasts in the future and I never really got my action call to action down. So now I got it down because guess what? You only become greater at it when you just keep on doing it. So I'll, here's my call to action, right? You can follow me on Instagram uh, at impact underscore coach. I have several Facebook groups, but man, if you want to be a part of a really cool community where now I uh, really help coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs in the areas of personal branding, leadership, and communication. Uh, you can find me at, at M21 Empowerment Group on Facebook. Other than that, my website is wwwm 21 the number empowermentcom So that's going to wrap this mentorship moment up. Brother, I want to thank you again for doing this, and you all be on the lookout for part two. Anything you want to say, man? Nah, man. Hey, I had a blast, bro. This is good stuff.